Alrighty, let's try this again. Again, I'm attempting an interview with Kevin LePage, a former NASCAR Winston Cup competitor. Let's try this again. Hey, is this Kevin? This is him. Uh, are you free right now to after? I am, sir. Alrighty, and since it looks like that your schedule is kind of a little bit short, I've decided to reduce the interview to just 10 questions. Does that work for you? Yeah, that'll work. Alrighty. My first question is, uh, where are you originally from? Uh, Shelburne, Vermont. Nice. What is it like there? Uh, it's beautiful in the, uh, in the summer for about 30 days, and then winter comes. Uh, now, seriously, it's a, it's a nice small state, uh, a lot of mountains, uh, good skiing in the wintertime, and uh, beautiful summer, sunny summers, and uh, just a small little state. Nice. I'm originally from Estes Park, Colorado. It's Okay, well, it's got a lot of similarities to Colorado. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All righty, my next question after that is, what made you get into motor racing? Well, years ago, uh, when I was a kid, my dad used to drag race at the local track. And, um, you know, I was a big gearhead then. And, mm. and uh, as he got out of racing, um, we went to our local track to do, uh, with our record. Um, and I just love watching cars go around and, my brother started racing, older brother started racing five years before I did, and uh, then uh, he got married, and I took his ride over, and just, mm. uh, the, the rest is history. Nice. What was the significance of your of your Bush team's number 71? Well, actually, it's a funny story. Um, we came down here, and I raced up north started my career with number 17 and oh. I came south I applied for 17 and they said 17 was taken so they gave me 71. Ah. So when it was Daytona, um, Robbie Reiser and Matt Kenta uh, team, they wanted 71 and they said that the number was taken and they gave them 17. So, <laughs> It was a short period of time. Both of us wanted our own numbers, but for whatever reason, we didn't get them. So uh, that's why I ended up with 71. Nice. What was driving for Buzz McCall's team like in 1998, American Equipment Racing? Uh, the Caterpillar car? Yeah, the Caterpillar one, yeah. Yeah, I drove only uh, one race for him. Um, oh. I think uh, they were looking at doing a different driver uh, or, or just trying to evaluate their program. Uh, David Green was their driver. And uh, we went to Richmond, had a really solid day uh, at Bass Ray Car. I think we finished in the top 15. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I honestly thought it was going to, to turn into, you know, longer races or more races, but uh, it didn't happen. But, uh, it, it definitely, he had the team um, that should have competed a whole lot more and then, you know, for wins than, than what it did. Uh, all right. Uh, what was driving for Roush Racing like? Uh, it was interesting. I mean, uh, you know, we were, uh, back, back then we were a five-car team. Uh, uh, we had two teams, Mark Martin and Jeff Burton's cars were in house out of Mooresville. Uh, myself and Johnny Benson were housed out of Liberty, North Carolina, and uh, really? Chad Little was housed out of more. So for the first uh, first couple of years, you know, we were doing a lot of traveling meetings and that stuff. And then uh, when we finally moved to Roush, in, Roush Racing in Concord, um, where all five teams were, uh, I only lasted a year, and then they shut the team down. Uh, wow. Yeah, Jack, Jack was an awesome guy. Uh, still to the day, we remain friends. But, and, uh, you know, there was times that I should have won races, but I made mistakes. And uh, But, you know, he gave me the equipment to, to win races, that's for sure. Nice.
Nice. So were those the good years of your racing career, like the best years of your career? Uh, you know, um, yes and no. Uh, you know, I had uh, solid races at Morgan McClure. Uh, um, you know, we, we had a lot of fast race cars. Um, you know, we went through some major body changes with Pontiac and Chevrolet. Um, we had fast race cars on a lot of speedway races that just got caught up in the big one. Uh, uh, we had some fast mile and a half cars and, you know, bad pits off here or an untimely caution, you know, not good finishes. Uh, uh, the Nation Red car with Jim Smith, we had very fast board. Um, you know, we ran just about every race track that we went to with them. And I think I ran about a half a dozen races with them. Um, you know, we qualified in the top ten. You know, ran in the top ten, and you know, bad pit stop or you know, something fell off the car. So, you know, we had we had multiple cars, uh, race teams that we ran good. And then I had my own team, my own uh, Bush team. Uh, when I came down here, and, and then um, you know, when we got uh, got hired, got hired for, with David Ridland, uh, who gave me my first win at Homestead. Oh. Uh, you know, we had awesome Chevrolets, and, and probably should have won a dozen or so races. And again, just circumstances were out of our control on a lot of them. You know, being on the end road, leading, and caution comes up, put you down a lap. I mean, just crazy thing. But, uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I would say that the 500 some odd races I've ridden, drove, and, and NASCAR, all of them were defining moments in my career. Nice. What was your reaction to Scott Pruitt winning the pole at Watkins Glen in your car? It was awesome. I mean, we expected to win the race. Um, we went to, we went up there, we put a lot of effort in that car, uh, for Scott. Um, we went up and tested for two days, and um, we knew our only competition was going to be Ron Fellows. And when we went up to the race, I wasn't there. I, I wasn't there for qualifying. I went up the, the day of the race, uh. and um, we got the pole, and they they got the green flag, and Scott was gone. And about after about 10 laps, he'd come on the radio, and he says, I'm, I'm running out of brakes what did you guys do? And I'm like, well, we put all new stuff on this thing. I mean, and I don't know, you know, and he managed to finish, uh, I'm not sure, I think it was the top 10 finish, top five, something like that. And um, the following week, we were at a racetrack and Ron Bell's crew chief came over and said, I, I gotta tell you, you know, we found something in brake pad that you guys, we didn't want to tell you guys, but you guys were gonna beat us. And what happened was the brake pads that we needed to run were no longer made in, made out of out of country. They were made in the United States, and they had to eliminate some of the asbestos on it. And they found an old set of brake pads, and they put them in Boris's car or I mean Ron's car just before they got to the racetrack. And that was the only reason why Ron won that race. Um, I mean, Richie said Ron was mad as heck on the radio because Scott was pulling away from waving to him going up through the S's. That's how fast their Ford was. But, you know, we, we put a lot of effort in it and, you know, Scott did a great job for us and uh, we were hoping to do a couple more races, but just things didn't work out for us. All righty. What made you join Morgan McClure Motorsports in 2001? Uh, I was unemployed and they called me up after uh, I think Robbie Gordon uh, left. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a really good, solid relationship that year. And then they let me go at the end of the season. And I don't know, I think it was Skinner or Spencer they put in. And then about a year later, they called me back up to go back in that car. And their biggest regret was to let me go the first time. And, um, uh, you know, I, I feel bad for the organization because it was an organization that still should be in the sport today. Yeah. But being up in uh, Virginia, uh, the top 35 rule came in, which they were 36 when that rule was implemented. Um, Pesky took their sponsor. You know, just a lot of things that hurt that organization. But, uh, you know, I really enjoyed, you know, 
inspiration for for that group and uh, still remain friends with those guys today. Ah, all righty. That's good to hear that you're still friends with them. And uh, what was driving for Bob Jenkins like, front row? Well, uh, you know, Bob was, uh, when I got there, uh, Bob was just getting his feet wet in the sport. Um, he, he was a guy who enjoyed racing, had a little bit of money, and, um, you know, wanted to, uh, you know, wanted an experienced driver in there to help get the program where it needs to be. And uh, unfortunately, we had some behind the scenes stuff that was going on that crew chiefs wanted to bring their own driver in and not me. Um, and Bob would call me up and ask me, you know, what my opinion was, and I would tell him, and then he asked the crew chief and he'd get a different answer. But then Bob would call me back and they, you know, I hear two different stories, and I'm like, Bob, I got nothing to, to lie to you about. My, my career is on the downhill side. Uh, some of these guys, you know, are looking to stay in the business, working-wise, whatever. I, I really don't care. If you want to fire me, you can fire me. But I'm just telling you, this is what direction we need to go. And it lasted a few more months, and then, you know, they went a different direction. But, uh, you know, Bob's a good, good friend of mine. Here he is, and later after this, we got out of the cup car, we did uh, an Xfinity program together for a few races, and uh, just a really nice guy. That's pretty cool. And uh, this is my last one I'm going to ask, because it looks like, you know, your schedule is a little bit tight, so. Uh, more, I got, I got plenty of time. Oh, well then I think I can probably add a few more questions then, probably. Okay. All righty. So what was driving for Beth Morgenthau like? Oh, uh, you know, um, Tony and Beth are great people. Um, unfortunately, uh, they were out of sight car owners. They'd only show up for the races. They wouldn't be at the shop during the day, uh, huh. during the week. And um, we had some, again, some very fast race cars. Uh, just unfortunately, we had some wrong people in the mix, starting from general manager to the parts guy down to crew chiefs. I mean, just a lot of different people that didn't need to be in the position that they were in. And again, you know, another um, fine car owner that left the sport way too early. Ah, all righty. What is racing at the Daytona 500 like? Uh, you know, back in the day, it was awesome. I mean, we used to love going down there. Um, you know, all the cars were different. You could tell the manufacturers, you know, if you're running a Ford or a Chevrolet or a Pontiac or a Dodge, uh, each car would react different behind another car. So you'd be out there in the draft trying to figure out what car you could race with the next day. Um, you know, we finished ninth in a in a Daytona 500 and had a car that realistically should have been top five, but uh, they had a caution late in the race and it just got everybody bunched up. But uh, we were uh, for an underdog team, under finance team. Uh, that was a big deal for us that day. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Finishing ninth at Daytona was pretty cool. It looks like. Absolutely. What was driving for Joe Falk like in 1998, LJ Racing? I think it started back in 97. Uh, he called me up and wanted me to go to New Hampshire. Oh. And um, we went up to New Hampshire and uh, practiced well all day. We were in the top 20, which was the best, time, best that car had been. Oh. And uh, we went in the qualifying, we went through one and two. And uh, on the lap tractor, we were fourth fastest. And unfortunately, we carried so much speed, we got down in three and four. And, and this first time in a cup car, we made a overdrove the corner, slipped the racetrack, and missed the race. So uh, he said, you know, it's, you were very impressive. We said, we'll go to Charlotte, and uh, we'll get down there and test. And if you're fast enough, we'll go back to the race. So we went down there, we tested. Uh, we left the night in second place right behind uh, Ryan Newman in the Penske car. Ooh. 
and uh, went back to the race and uh, qualified top 10, top 15, which was the best qualifying to date in that car. Ooh. And, um, you know, Joe, uh, Joe was excited, you know, so he hired me for the off season. We brought in a crew chief, uh, Doug Riker. Uh, went to Daytona, starting off a of rookie of the year, and uh, I remember when it was probably uh, half a dozen races into the season, we got a phone call to go drive for Roush. Ooh. And uh, I was honest with Joe. I mean, I told him point blank. He gave me an opportunity that probably nobody else would have. I said, I've got an opportunity to go race for Roush, but you know, the seat doesn't open for another month. I'd like to stay in the car and help you out, you know, until you find a driver. And he's, oh, yeah, no problem, you know. And we went to Sonoma, qualified the car in Sonoma, came in race morning, and Tommy Kendall was getting in my car, and I was fired right out of California. Ah, all righty. That makes sense. And what was your reaction to leading your first laps in Winston Cup competition at Pocono? Uh, you know, any time you can lead a lap, no matter where you are, it's just exciting. Um, my whole career is full of excitement. Uh, there's a lot of firsts for me, especially being from Vermont. Uh, so, you know, first Vermont to lead a cup, cup race, first Vermont to win a Bush Series race, first Vermont to win a cup hole. Uh, just a lot of firsts and, uh, you know, something that you know, I'm very proud to represent the state like I did. Ah. That's good on you. And what was Jack Roush's reaction to you winning the poll in Atlanta? He's actually surprised, you know, because um, even though, you know, I was a team car, you know, there was a pecking order there. I was most generally third or fourth, sometimes even fifth on, depending on what racetrack we went to. And, um, you know, for us to win the poll was exciting. And then, you know, we ended up, being in the Bud Shootout the following year, uh, which was cool. Uh, you know, we had Mac tools on the car for a one-off deal. So, I mean, just not winning the pole was just the one thing. I mean, we ended up having to go run the Bud Shootout, so we had to sell a speedway car for there. So, I mean, just a lot of positives out of it. That's great to hear. And uh, that, was, that sounds like you had a lot of fun. And what was it like finishing fifth at Darlington? Uh, it was one of my favorite racetracks. Uh, I loved Darlington from the first time I went there. Uh, the year we finished fifth, it was uh, two years com combined, four races. We were the only driver, and those the years I was at Roush, we were the only driver to finish in the top ten, four races in a row, and be on the lead lap in four races at the end in a row. So uh, we had a setup there. I loved the place. Uh, would have won that race if we didn't have rain out. That's it. They didn't want Bert, uh, one during the rain, but we passed him two or three different times throughout the day. And, uh, unfortunately, Mother Nature got it that day, but we had a fast forward there. Wow. So, yeah, what led to your departure from Roush? Uh, sponsorship issues. Um, we didn't have a, a Prime Star was leaving, TV guy was leaving. And um, they were struggling to find a sponsor for me. Uh, they worked really hard to find one and just, uh, you know, just couldn't put it together. All righty. What was your crew chief, Scott Eggleston, like? Uh, you know, Scott, I worked with Scott a couple different times. Um, you know, I worked with him at Roush. I worked with him over at Bam. I worked with him at Front Row. I even worked with him at Morgan McClure. Um, you know, we worked good together. Uh, when he uh, when he asked me a question, I gave him an answer. He was able to fix it. Oh. If he second guessed himself, he always asked me. You know, we talked about it. You know, came up with a game plan. Ah, pretty cool. What was being an owner driver like in the Winston Cup? Well, you know, back in the day, um, you know, I only. I only ran one race, I believe, as an owner-driver, um, and uh, we had a lot of help. Um, Doug Yates gave me a motor. I just they gave me a motor, but he rented me a motor and, and uh, go to the 600 and uh, qualified top 
15 in my own car and, and uh, you know, we just had a lot of help. We had to throw together a pit crew and uh, open up a lot of eyes, you know. I think that's what made me stay in the Cup Series, you know, a few more years and where, you know, we took this car that was an old Grand uh, Hodge car that didn't make Indy with Shauna Robinson and uh, we put it together and went to Charlotte like I said, ran a top 15. I think we finished top 20. Not 100 percent sure. Ah, huh, cool. What was driving the 57 car for Ted Campbell like? Uh, you know, Ted was uh, Ted was a, a fun guy. The crew was fun, even though they only ran a limited schedule. They were their goal was to come full time, and uh, we had some very, very, very fast sports there. Um, I mean, very fast forward and, um, uh, just a great guy. I mean, I wish, I wish Ted would, would have been able to put this thing together because, um, he, he would have been a fun car owner in that sort of day. Yeah. What's the difference between racing at Talladega and Daytona Speedway? Uh, back in the day, Daytona was a handling racetrack. Uh, uh -huh. Talladega just kept your foot on it all day long and just run wide open. A lot more room. Uh, so uh, I always look forward to going to Daytona because I seem to be able to drive a slick, wore-out race track better than Talladega, even though I ran good at both of them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they're both, if I remember right, they're both super speedways where drafting is common. Mm -hmm. What is road course racing like? Uh, you know, it was different. Um, I did a little bit up in Vermont uh, at the uh, old Loudoun, New Hampshire racetrack. Uh, we did some road racing up there. Uh, I liked it because it gave us a change of pace. Uh, I never really quite figured out Sonoma. I uh, loved watching Glenn. Uh, you know, we were able to go to Mexico City uh, with the uh, Xfinity program and... Uh, you know, I just love road racing. Uh, again, we had a, a car to should have won at Watkins Glen with Morgan McClure. We had a two dollar park bail on us on the brakes. Ah, uh, you know, cost us a, a good finish. What year was that? Uh, I don't remember. Um, to be honest with you, uh, it, it's just we were running uh, third behind uh, Terry Labonte and Ricky Rudd. And uh, all of a sudden, the brakes gave out on me, and we came down pit road, and the brakes blew it in. By that time, you know, we lost the lap. And just, a, just a tough day, and uh, Larry was mad as heck when we got done because we had a car that should have won, or at least top five. And next thing I know, we got to the race shop on Tuesday, and they found the, the park failure in the brake. And uh, Larry changed his tune then, you know, because the brake pads looked brand new. I wasn't hard on the brakes, just um, a, uh, what they call a banjo fitting. Uh, it's supposed to be brass, and the guy put an aluminum one in, and when it got hot, it just melted it. Ah, uh, all righty. What is racing in Mexico City like? I probably wouldn't do it again. Uh, <laughs> air travel was, was good getting there, but just uh, going through customs and, and dealing with 26 million people. Uh, in Mexico City, getting to and from the racetrack, to and from the airport. Uh, it was just, uh, I mean, the racetrack is, itself was fun, but just uh, the area was something I would go back to. Ah, uh, all righty. And uh, what was racing for Tad Geschechter like at ST Motorsports? Uh, I, I ran for Tad a couple different times. Uh, one time... I think Robert Presley got hurt, and we were at South Boston. We had a really good car, and then uh, we put a deal together to go to Homestead and uh, out qualified all their team cars, and uh, actually ran very well down there. Uh, another race deck that I love. So, I mean, uh, I was happy to see Dad uh, make it in the business. I mean, he puts a lot of effort into it, uh, dealing with sponsors and stuff, and uh, he's been successful at it. Yeah, did you hear that Almondinger won for the team in the Cup Series a few years back? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was, that was one of the races that I liked that year where I was accepting of the outcome, if you know what I mean. Because <laughs> I, Almondinger really deserved it. No other way yeah. to put it. Yeah. And it was really amazing. You got to give Almondinger one for being able to make that comeback from his doping issue in 2012. Yeah, yeah. Once you, once you make a mistake, it's tough to come back, but he did. Yeah, and not only that, but he became a Cup Series winner, which was really amazing. Yeah. Uh, what was racing the Truck Series like compared to the Cup or Bush Series? Oh, uh, you know, it reminded me a lot of Daddy Dang racing. You know, just relax. Uh, I tested one of the first trucks that ever became um, uh, before they even started a series down in, uh, Disneyland, and, um, uh, always wanted to run them, uh, fortunate enough, I ran for Bobby Dodder a handful of races, and, uh, again, uh, I was hoping that when I retired, uh, from Cup or Infinity that I would have, an uh, opportunity to go truck racing, and, um, I just stayed too long in the Infinity program, and so went to a truck deal, but, uh, you know, I was trying to, trying to get some more wins in and it just never worked out. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, what NASCAR series did you enjoy best between Winston Cup, Bush, or Truck Series? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, all of them. Uh, yeah. You know, we had great fans at every race that we went to. Uh, I had success on all of them. I mean, I, I never won a Cup race, but I came close so many times. And... I could go back and name probably two dozen races that we should have won. Uh, I can say what happened and what laughing happened. So, uh, I mean, all three of them were good to me, and, and I can't say one was better than the other. Yeah, a lot of drivers have told me the same thing. Yeah. What's your favorite classic film involving race cars between The Love Bug, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and The Last American? Uh, you know, uh, probably Days of Thunder. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that would be on that list, yeah, because it's, it's no, classic. Just because it was more current, and um, the race shop, you know, was not far from where I live here in Morrisville, so I mean, just, that would probably be the one. Yeah, I might need to start adding Days of Thunder to that list when I ask questions, because all the other drivers are telling me the same thing. Days of Thunder is the best. Yeah. So I might need to start adding that on my list of questions, Days of Probably. Thunder. What was the feeling of racing in the Gatorade duels that qualify the cars for the Daytona 500? You know, they were, uh, before they had the lock-in, um, they were more of a strategy race, you know, trying to get yourself high enough to get a good pit stop. But when they started to uh, have to race your way in, um, you know, they only gave two spots. Uh, that's when it really became challenging, both mentally and, and you know, physically, because you had to be on top of your game. And uh, fortunate enough for us, we always made those races by bringing good race cars and uh, made the right changes and the right decisions at the right time. All righty. Pretty cool. What was your reaction to finishing ninth at Daytona in 2005? Uh, again, I mean, for an underfunded team with a race car that had never qualified for a speedway race, uh, I was happy for the car owners. Uh, All right. If they would put a lot of money into it. And uh, they just gave us the best what they could, and uh, it was a fun race. All righty. All righty. That's pretty cool. And, again, it's pretty cool to see the underdogs perform very well. And uh, been there and done. Go ahead. I said, I've been there and done that. Ah, all right. What was racing for R&J Racing like? That, that's the team that we raced for at the Daytona in finish ninth with. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, what was the biggest disappointment of your racing career? Uh, I would say not being a cup winner. Yeah. Um, that we, uh, we should have won a bunch. Um, just let some of them slip away. You know, both I made mistakes, team made mistakes, and NASCAR made mistakes. So, I mean, it was about one particular 
thing, just a just a disappointing thing that we never got. Yeah. All right. Uh, are you religious at all? And if so, how has it impacted your career? Well, you know, um, yeah, I am religious, Catholic. Uh, uh -huh. You know, I always said a prayer before I started the car. And, uh, you know, because I always told people that, you know, when I was racing, when I got my race car, I got in my office or I got my coffin. I just didn't know what day was going to happen. All so, right. Uh, Goddamn. Yeah, that's good on you, man. I really like that. I'm Christian, so it's a similar thing. I'm similar yeah. to you in that. All righty, so this is my last question on my list, which we ended up covering the whole interview after all, which I'm grateful for. But this is yeah. my last one on the list, and uh, it is, what are you doing now that your career in NASCAR might be over? Well, uh, when I was still racing, um, I bought a small landscape company because I knew racing wasn't going to be forever. Uh -huh. And uh, I grew up from uh, 25 customers to over 100 customers. And um, I'm, a, I'm a guy that stays back in the office and does all the mechanic work and does all the billing and estimating and, and stuff. And, when the guys need me, I'll go out and work with them. I mean, I enjoy being outside. That's why I bought a landscape company. Uh, um, just, uh, just kind of take it easy and play a lot of golf. And uh, just enjoying life after NASCAR, which a lot of people don't understand that there is a life after NASCAR, but there is. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And what is hospice again? Pardon me? Didn't you say hospice or did I misheard that? And if so, what's hospice? No, I didn't. I don't. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, okay. Never mind. I I must have misheard something you said. I I apologize for that. Oh, no worries. All righty. Thank you for your time, and I'll let and you what know. What are you going to use this stuff for? Oh, I I I. If I didn't say it already on social media, I'll say it again. I uh, if you're okay with it, I'm gonna be using it in an ebook I'm writing about motor racing in the United States. I'm I'm doing a whole report on motor racing such oh, as cool. such as NASCAR, sports cars, Indy cars and that's pretty much it. Okay. What do you hope to have it done? I hope to have it done hopefully within the next couple years, but I'm kind of focusing my time right now on getting the information by interviewing, you know, people from the sport before I start writing it. All right, awesome. Well, looking forward to reading it when it's done. Yep, and when whenever it's published, which it's an ebook, so whenever it's published, I'll send it to you through our Facebook Messenger. All right. All right, bud. All righty. Thank you very much, Kevin. All right. Bye bye. Have a good one. All righty, that turned out well. I think I misheard him on the final thing he said, but you know. Things happen. You make mistakes. Live and learn. Alrighty. So that worked out. Thanks to all who joined me.